right. And now I can't see myself, so I'm just checking. You can all see me. Right, um, so obviously I'd now like to talk to you about Verifid. Um, everybody pronounces it a little bit different. It's a, a yet another little shibboleth of how to say it. Um, and Verifid is JISC's new um, commercial um, verification service. Um, we launched it, um, I think, at the beginning of March, a few three or four months ago, when it seemed to be a very, very different world. Um, interestingly, it's, our usage has really been holding up during this time. Um, anyway, uh, essentially, um, we use it to verify that a user belonging to an organization has a particular affiliation, which obviously we can do through SSO with that institution. Um, so it works via an API for the subscriber's client. Um, it's privacy preserving because it's a service provider in the UK Federation. Um, and obviously, we've got the logs and everything so we can deal with um, the situations we've just been talking about earlier when if credential, you know, some we think credentials might be fished or something. Um, um, Verified, um, it was a, a, a eventually worked with the AEF. They actually developed Verified. Um, they used it in their own context for um, commercial verification. And it was something we, we looked at and we effectively took off a shelf and um, they run the back end for us. Um, and it's something now it's been running successfully for um, three or four months now. Um, so here's the, the obligatory diagram and a little bit about the interaction flow. Um, essentially, um, an end user will go to the principal use case, which is a student discount provider, perhaps, and uh, ask for a discount. They need their identity to be verified. Um, so previously, the uh, discount provider would have had a service provider entity in the UK Federation, um, and um, they'd have gone that route. But now with Verified, um, they go to the um, uh, discount provider, that bounces them to Verified, which goes to the institution. We use the institution credentials to say, yes, they are a member of staff, or yes, they are a student. And then the... Um, uh, client picks up the token and it tells them what they need to know if, if they're a valid student or not, which they then use for whatever business purpose is in question. Um, it's a, it is a commercial venture by JISC um, and it's 20 pence per verification result. Um, and that verification result is a yes or a no for whatever um, criteria you most commonly student. Um, and we feel that a no, obviously, it's charged for a yes or a no um, because it's just as important for the um, discount provider to, to know that. Um, the discount provider or customer, they determine the length of validity. Um, thanks, Arisa, for um, stopping me using too many acronyms. Um, and in the business model side of things, you might find a discount provider perhaps with relatively low value discounts only needs to determine validity once a year um, that somebody's a student, whereas an, another provider might be dealing with much more higher value resources and want to have that, you know, tested um, every time somebody tries to log in or access something. Um, so again, that's completely up to the um, verified customer how long they want that validity to be. Um, and obviously a key aspect of it is that um, obviously our institutions are very strict on who they're providing credentials to and revocation at the end of the course, et cetera. That's the key part of it. And customers we have live right now, we've got Student Beans, My Uni Days, Future Finance, Sheer ID, and they're all discount providers in one or another, but they all also operate slightly differently. Some of them might be doing it directly. Some of them might be using the um, uh, verification for their, their clients. Um, and what does Verify ID bring? Well, obviously, clearly a high confidence of result. And that's what we've just been talking about earlier about SSO. Um, and, you know, compared to, I do know some uh, services, they'll offer discounts, for example, if you're a student, and they'll verify it by email. Um, sadly, I'm not a student, but I do have a dot ac uc, um, email address. So you can do the maths on how actually confident and efficient that, that is. Verified is also bringing the idea that we're saving time for our customers because um, 
they're not having a process, lots of photocopied or scanned or sent in forms proving somebody's student status. And also it's privacy preserving because the students aren't having to send back information off. They're just logging in as normal to their institutional portal and verifying their identity that way. Um, so because it's high confidence um, and increase, um, saves time, it is increased commercial value for, for our users and that's why they're adopting it. Um, I'm talking about some of the big players in this area, Student Beans, Share ID, etc. my uni days. We're also very keen to support um, commercial startups as well because this is a new service. Um, we did ask the um, uh, use cases who fell into this category of basically not being publishers, um, um, but leveraging UK Federation to move for verified ID. And we know startups are probably on a slightly different um, business model. Um, and we're speaking to various ones in different institutions, which might be an idea for some sort of discount or um, app within their university. And it's something which might go um, and be used out, outside of outside of that and be used amongst other universities. So we're keen to sort of help organizations get in, uh, sorry, um, uh, startups to get going. So if there's one in your institution, you're thinking, oh, maybe Verified ID meets this use case then you know, let us know and we'll very happily talk to them. Um, so what's the key message here? Um, well, the key thing about Verified ID, that it helps us keep the UK Federation free for our main mission, and which for most of our users is allowing end user students to, and researchers to access academic content and to do that free at the point of cost. Um, we don't charge publishers to be part of our Federation. Um, we could. If we did though, we'd expect that charge possibly to be passed on in terms of licenses. So we don't want anything, any cost to be passed on to our core members, UK, FE and HE. Um, and income from Verified ID, which just gets, helps us keep that. It also keep, helps us keep a full spectrum help desk. Um, we don't just, um, you know, register um, entities. We support institutions deploy, um, their solutions, whether or not it's Open Athens or Shibboleth, where we offer advice on all sorts of things. Um, we do the same with publishers um, and it helps us have that level, level playing field. I know there's a lot of third parties in this um, webinar right now um, and you know it enables us to have anybody who's eligible to register in the UK Federation to do that to support them. So what can institutions do to um, support Verified ID? Well, one of the key ones is actually to make sure you're really releasing student um, attribute to Verified rather than just member. Um, commercially, um, many of our customers get more value with being able to completely demonstrate they are verifying a student, and that means the student attribute. Um, and again, that helps the business case for Verified. Also helps your students because fundamentally, we're not just about the whole idea of getting access to e-learning content resources. You know, we are about the student experience and one of the parts of student experience is discounts. So it helps them get through to that. Um, if, you're, if you're looking at, sorry, I've got something on my screen so I can't see what I'm looking at. Um, if, if you want to know how to support releasing student, um, just email us at the service desk and we'll give you some advice. And also there's a link there which will actually be on the, new, uh, the news item site for these webinars, um, which actually tells you how to go to the Open Athens documentation to um, determine how to release stuff there. Um, and in the future, um, Verified's a fairly adaptable model. Um, it's a key element of providing um, other options for authentication, obviously, um, for our did wide use base. It matches various commercial models, but I can also imagine it's something that other areas, perhaps even other federations can adopt um, because um, obviously resourcing is very tight. And this is a way that federations can um, bring in some commercial income um, without affecting what is usually their core use case, which is um, supporting free at the point use access to academic material. Um, Verified, obviously, it's a GISC SP. And from my point of view, it's um, allowed us to get a little bit of um, internal intelligence um, about what's going on. It's been interesting watching usage rates um, during COVID. Um, you know, I expected them to drop off hugely, um, in, in, certainly in terms of student spending. I haven't kind of 
seen that if it's any indication but it also gives us an idea of the, the health of the federation a uh, little bit of an insight there a window on it because obviously uh, mesh federations and hub and spoke how they give a, gather their intelligence and information is very different um, certainly it's a it's a changing landscape the whole idea of commercial verification um, we've got widening use cases um, we can see what's happening um, just you know, recently with obviously the impact of COVID, um, the world seems to have woken up to the value of um, uh, emergency workers, healthcare workers, um, and, you know, lots of companies are looking at how they can reward them, make, um, you know, provide discounts there. Um, the UK Federation has always been very fortunate that we have a um, broad definition of who can be in the UK Federation, um, particularly around public good. Um, so, you know, we're, we're well scoped to be able to um, uh, meet those cases. So I'm going to stop the screen share now so I can actually see, it's a bit weird when you're just talking to a wall, and look at some of the questions and feel free to unmute and just shout out some questions. Okay, I think Jonathan's question refers to the previous talk. So what I would say, if you are interested about learning more about Verifid, um, if it could meet, if you want to learn more about it in terms of why is my institution releasing attributes to it, or want to learn more about it because you think you could leverage Verifid as a commercial customer, or if it could be the sort of thing might help your particular area as an income stream, or again, if you think it could be a service for your institution because you've got um, startups which could use it, you know, just get in touch. And I think in, because it is a new commercial service, um, we can probably talk in a little bit more detail um, for, than we can quite in a, in a, what I hope is a very open webinar. Okay, I'll give it for a couple of minutes. We've got one of the biggest publishers on the planet here. We've got pretty much most of the UK Federation um, help desk here. We've got um, two of the showrunners of just T and I and Joe and Reese here. So if you really do want to ask a question about pretty much anything, um, you know, go ahead now. And I just say, yeah, Jonathan, give me a shout and we'll talk about Verifit. Yeah, yeah. So you got uh, five more minutes of accountability. We're here if you want to ask questions. You can even have a, a, a second comeback question we, 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 more than the um, uh, COVID press conferences. Okay. Um, so we've been doing these for a week now at lunchtime. Um, I think we've had relatively good attendance. It would have been lovely to be doing these things in person. I don't know when that will ever happen, but we're certainly going to plan to have an hour slot in about um, a month's time. Don't know what the topics will be, but there'll certainly be an open area as well. And I suspect we'll be looking at doing something online again in six months time, regardless of whether or not we have physical events, because I think there's value to both of these things, particularly the fact that many of our user base don't get to be able to go to events and town halls, but could attend this. So we've got a couple of questions. Uh, um, we'll, uh, do Andy's first. Has Open Athens has merged with GISC? What's the commitment to the UK Federation? Um, that's pretty easy to say, um, uh, you know, 100%. Um, Open Athens, um, it's multiple words. It can mean the Open Athens Federation. Um, which is predominantly, I believe, healthcare, um, but it's a natural federation. Open Athens is also a technology used both within their federation and within the UK federation. UK federation is possibly a little bit easier. It's the overarching trust fabric and structure, and within it, we have Open Athens, we have Shivluff, we have other third parties, Graham's here, Pete's here, Andy, you're, you're here yourself. Um, we want that to be a level playing field, as far as I know, it's just as easy to register an Open Athens entity as it is if you deploy Shibboleth yourselves, um, which, of course, just um, um, pays into the Shibboleth Consortium to, to provide that option, or use another third party, such as you guys or any of the other, as BBC, other vendors out there. Yeah, just to reiterate what Mark said, um, UK Fed is not going anywhere. 
uh, just because fully committed to it. Um, as Mark said, they're kind of slightly different target markets, the Open Athens uh, Federation and the UK Federation. Um, and as far as the UK Federation is concerned, Open Athens is just another provider um, of outsourced services alongside other third party vendors. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, and um, obviously just because the Federation the operator and we do it on behalf of a very wide range of community, which isn't just the core of JISC membership. And just going to more detail in my reply to Gary as well. Yeah, um, EduPerson scoped affiliation is control vocabulary and multi-scoped. So um, at one point when I was in Cardiff, I would have um, had member staff and student all being released at the same time because I was all at the same time. So institutions should be releasing everything that's applicable. We don't tend to use employee and faculty over in the UK, um, which are in the control vocabulary because they don't... Uh, quite map to how the US uses them. Uh, we tend to just use staff and student, but um, certainly member staff, student, uh, alum for alumni, um, affiliate for people who aren't quite full members of the institution, and library walk-in if you have uh, any library walk-in people who give accounts to and whatnot. Okay, just to clarify, I think UK Federation, yes, obviously we primarily support UK education research organisations, um, but we also have um, probably the largest number of commercial um, service providers in UK Federation, which we export to Edugain, I think we're roughly 40% of that. So we do generally consider ourselves international because due to an accident of geography, language, and things like the GIST model licence, an awful lot of um, service providers have joined UK Federation to get into Educain and they're from all over the world. Um, but for us in JUSC, I think um, uh, how UK Federation and Open Athens Federation interrelate and how they interplay is going to be more about how we can make things more efficient about uh, for those members who are in both of them, not about, you know, figuring out some way to smash the federations into one or something because it, they just that's not going to happen. Um, but there's some, you know, internal process stuff. I'm sure we can uh, uh, improve uh, efficiency around for, for those registered on both. And Mark, yes, we'll we'll feed that back to Refed. Okay, I think we're coming up to the hour now. Got to say um, thank you to everybody who's participated in the entire week, um, and. Um, yeah, we'll plan to do a small one of these probably in a month's time and some kind of online thing again in another six months. Um, I'll say thanks to Mark and Sari. Uh, it's a very interesting presentation and I'll come back to you on that because I, I think there's a lot of things we can sort of dig down into. Great, thank you. Thank you for having us. Okay, thanks on behalf of the entire GIST team here. Thank you very much. Thank you.